Back in the mid-2000s, a new Justice League movie was fully casted and scripted, but only days away from filming, the movie was mysteriously cancelled. So what happened? Hi, I'm Redden, and welcome to Cut Short. The year was 2007. Pop culture was filled with such sweet treasures as Linkin Park, the B movie, Spider-Man 3, the one that ruined it all, Fantastic Four, Rise of the Incoming Reboot, and Nancy Drew, the Hardy Boys Get Hardy. But along all the glamorous pop culture, there was a movie behind closed doors that was going to amaze audiences. George Miller, the director of Mad Max Fury Road, was announced to direct a new Justice League film titled Justice League Mortal, scheduled for a release date in July of 2009. This movie was planned to be the most expensive movie ever made at $300 million budget, but suddenly the script, costumes, sets were all scrapped. There's a lot to get through since we have all the information about what happened and what exactly the plot was going to look like, so let's start with the basics. The script for Justice League Mortal is actually fully available online for anybody to view. After reading through the script, it's actually not half bad. It's definitely a fun read and I would fully recommend it. The story seems heavily inspired by the Justice League animated series. In fact, the hero layout is almost identical. The film consisted of Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, The Flash, Green Lantern, Martian Manhunter, and Aquaman. Each hero spends practically all their time in costume. The cast would also have gone as follows. DJ Katrona as Superman, Army Hammer as Batman, Megan Gale as Wonder Woman, Adam Brody as The Flash, Common as Green Lantern, Santiago Cabrera as Aquaman, and Hugh Keys Bunn as Martian Manhunter. In this film, there's no origin stories to be seen. It seems as if every single character has been operating for a lengthy amount of time in this universe. To sum up this movie, I think Jay Baruchel, who was going to play Maxwell Lord, said it best. I'll just say this. If we had been able to make the movie that we had gone down to rehearse, if you had seen the production art I'd seen, it would have been the coolest thing ever. But let's get into the plot for the movie. As I said, the whole script is available online and I read through the whole thing so I can sum it up here. The film's perspective is mostly seen through The Flash, who is constantly joking throughout to make the movie seem quite lighthearted. Barry Allen, who is the current Flash, is seen a lot with his nephew Wally West. Make sure to remember Wally West, he'll be important later. The film starts off with a funeral for a hero, but they never show who the funeral is for. Flashback to two days earlier, we see snippets of every hero showing that they are well respected and established in this universe. Wonder Woman is seen on TV speaking with the UN. She speaks about peace and how the world is practically free of war. Wonder Woman seems to be the face of the Justice League. After this, we see Alfred speak to Batman about how Gotham City's crime is just a mere nuisance, and the city is all quiet. It also seems as if Wonder Woman and Aquaman are in a romantic relationship, but suddenly in all the peace, we see that Martian Manhunter is being attacked. The Flash and Wonder Woman go to help. Whenever Martian Manhunter comes in contact with Oxygen, he is set on fire, flames being his one weakness. After this, the remaining members show up to help, but they're all taken out by their own weaknesses. After their defeat, they go investigate how they were mysteriously all beaten. They find out that two years back, Talia al Ghul had an affair with Batman. Talia snuck a device into Batman's clothes to hack into his tech. In Batman's computers, he has files to show how to take down every Justice League member. The Justice League learns that this information was taken by Talia al Ghul and is now in the hands of whoever defeated them. Angry at Batman for having this information, they lash out at him. But Batman explains that he needed this just in case any of the Justice League members went rogue. After they all come together, they investigate who could have done this. They find out that it was Maxwell Lord who was behind the attack. Maxwell Lord is a businessman who has psychic powers and has also appeared in the first ever Justice League comic, making it fitting that he'd be the main villain in the first Justice League movie. And no, I'm not counting that weird television movie from 1997 that was like an odd office ripoff before the office even existed. Also, it's really creepy and I don't want to think about it. And do you have to go to... Nowhere. The entire school's on a field trip watching that snow cone of yours melt into the bay. Hey, you want to catch some lunch? But back to the actual movie. So now knowing that it was Maxwell Lord who was the threat to the world, they go after him. When Maxwell figures out that he's been caught, he sends OMAC droids after them. But they have innocent civilians inside, so they cannot just destroy them. While this is all happening, Maxwell Lord uses his psychic powers to control Superman, turning him against the Justice League. In the hectic fights, they are able to save the civilians from the androids. And after fighting Superman for quite some time, they are able to get him back to his senses. There's actually plenty of concept art for the movie around the Superman fight scene. After the League comes back together, Maxwell Lord shows them that he has a doomsday device implanted in himself that will kill all of them if they try to kill him. The Justice League realizes that they cannot do anything to stop him, but the Flash knows exactly what to do. The Flash goes so fast, he merges himself with the Speed Force. 
which is what he uses to go so quick in the first place. When he merges himself with the Speed Force, he takes Maxwell Lord with him, sending himself and Lord into oblivion. After this event, the story propels itself two days forward, revealing the funeral that started the film was for The Flash. The film ends with Wally West, The Flash's nephew, taking up The Flash mantle, joining the Justice League. Like I said, the script is not half bad. It's honestly unfortunate that it never saw the big screen. George Miller seemed to have an incredibly unique vision for the movie that everybody seemed happy with. Army Hammer, who was planned to play Batman, explains what happened when the DC executives saw Miller's vision for the first time. Well, what we did was uh, we got down there and George Miller was basically like, we're going to push these DC people farther than they are ever going to be comfortable with. And then the DC people showed up and looked around and they were like, this is farther than we're comfortable with. <laughs> But we love it, and you can do whatever you want. And then it just went even farther. It was great, yeah. The reason Justice League Mortal was not made can be summed up in two words. Bad timing. Right before they are about to start production on Justice League, the writer's strike of 2007 and 2008 had begun and they had to move production to Australia, since they wanted to change the script a fair amount. But right before filming was about to begin in Australia, the studio then decided to move everything to Canada, even though George Miller wanted to keep production at Fox Studios Australia. After this, the project just broke down. There were floating rumors that George Miller had left the project, and after this, they announced that the film was eventually put on indefinite hold. Another reason was that Warner Brothers did not want to have multiple Batmans on screen. The Dark Knight Rises was about to come out around the same time as Justice League Mortal, and it would have confused a casual audience member. Warner Brothers was also not crazy about the budget. Jay Baruchel, who was supposed to play Maxwell Lord, explained the problem here. The problem was that, had it gone to production, it would have been the single most expensive movie in the history of movies. Sometimes people are reticent to spend upwards of $300 million. Unfortunately, because of all this bad timing and budget problems, the movie never came to be. It's a real shame too. It could have been incredibly unique. And judging by the quality of George Miller's film Mad Max Fury Road, it could have been amazing. But at this point, all we can do is imagine what Justice League Mortal could have looked like. Thank you so much for watching this cut short video. I've put the full script for Justice League Mortal in the description below along with all the concept art I could find. There's also a couple of articles that explain the movie in a little bit more depth than this video so I've linked all of those below. I also want to take this time to tell you guys about a channel that really helped me out and I think it's really underrated. It's called Films and Stuff. He sent me a long message on how to improve my channel and it really helped me a lot. He does videos just like me and I think if you like my content you'll really like his. I've linked one of my favorite videos of his below. It's all about the first Iron Man movie. I think you'll really enjoy it. As for this channel, more cancelled projects and video essays are on the way. I just recently made a Twitter and that's all linked below, so follow that if you'd like. Also subscribe so you can see these videos as soon as they come out. But thank you for watching this cut short video. I really hope you enjoyed it.